I don't ever think negatively about what happened because I made it through. I think it makes me the person of who I am today. But I just wondered like if I hadn't been in there for the few seconds that it was, what could be different today? My name's Craig Jakewith. I'm from Columbus, Pennsylvania. And I'm a woodshop teacher at the Cory High School. I have a passion for the outdoors and 2013, uh, that was almost taken from me. August 26, 2013 started out as a normal day. I coached football. I was living in central PA. Uh, came back from practice, started some dinner, put some oil in a pan, went to use the bathroom, came out of the pan, out of the bathroom and the pan was on fire. I thought that I'd be able to save my apartment. I grabbed the pan, ran to the door and didn't realize that I had locked the door when I got home. And the uh, pan that was on fire then splashed, catching me on fire in my apartment. I screamed, I ran into the living room of the apartment. So I grabbed a blanket because I lived on the second story and thought that I should try to go through the fire and out the door rather than jumping out a window and I was in shock from the burns so I didn't real, realize how bad I was. It wasn't until I made it out of the apartment and across the road that I knew um, that it was going to be a long road to recovery. Um, I had dropped my phone, I had dropped my wallet, I was in my boxer briefs and a cut off t-shirt and I ran out the door screaming that I needed someone to call 911 and could hear the first responders arriving. And I was life flighted from Phillipsburg to Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh. And then I don't remember the entire flight until I got to Pittsburgh and was unloaded from the helicopter and the exhaust from the helicopter was so hot I thought I was on fire again. I had, uh, a black lab that was just over a year old but he was at my parents house because of coaching football I didn't have the time to dedicate to have him it wasn't fair to leave him that the dog wasn't with me I don't know if I would have made it because I don't think he would have followed me through the fire and I wasn't gonna leave him yeah. but, uh, it's a inseparable bond between two people I think of him as a person. Gunner, it's right there. Come on. Bring it up here. Bring it up here. Come on. Um, we go hunting, walks in the woods, he goes swimming. In Pittsburgh from August 26, 2013 through October 4th, 2013. I was in there for 40 days. Um, ups and downs the entire time. Uh, I had 40% third degree burns, several skin grafts. I medical coded one time, which meant that I pretty much was dead several units of blood I was low on, had pneumonia, had a urinary tract infection. Um, if it was possible, I had it. Um, during that time, I was on severe painkillers. I returned to my parents' house in Columbus, Pennsylvania. Um, I was not able to return to work. They figured that I'd be out one to two years of work the high school that I now work in is my hometown high school, and it's been four years now since the injury. Since then, I've had three other surgeries on my hands. Every year, I go into the anatomy and physiology class and the healthcare class at the high school and give a presentation on it. And I'm open to anyone asking me questions because I like to 
inform people of the process that I went through. I, I don't necessarily think I'm making a difference, but I think I'm informing people of what burn victims go through. Um, like I said earlier, I had a cut off t-shirt on. Anywhere that I had clothing did not get burnt. Um, both my arms, as you can see, um, are burnt to the cutoff line here and here. Surgeries that I've had since the accident um, have all been on my left hand or right hand. If you take a look, you can see one of the surgeries was a Z plasty, and the next one they did a full skin graft and they took skin from my ribs, put it in there, cut through, and did carpal tunnel surgery. Shit. Shit.